Okay, this is going to be a video chart series on four stocks. SNPK, HBRM, GTRL, and SEFE. -E. We will start first with SNPK. Okay. Now, usually, just give me one second. Okay, here we go. Now, you see this big down move that happened on, what, Friday. <clears throat> usually, with uh, a stock, if this is all I saw, I would say, okay, with a down move like that on huge volume, you got to stay away because it's probably going to need to consolidate for some time and the uptrend is likely over. That's what I would usually say. But this is what makes technical analysis so great is if you look back on the chart, this isn't the first time such a down move has happened. If you look here, on March 16th, the stock also made a similar down move percentage-wise. Just gave up all of these gains, much like it gave up all of these gains. And actually, that turned out to be the bottom. Okay, And the stock actually went on to uptrend and make new highs and hit a dollar some odd cents. And then, so on Friday, again, you have this big down move from a buck down to 53 cents. And that actually turned out to be the bottom, at least for now. Okay, so this is why charting is, is so valuable because oftentimes history will repeat itself. Why will it repeat itself? Because just like the reason I mention now is how usually I would say it's done except for the fact that it's happened before, just like I'm saying that, other people are probably saying that. So we're the traders. We're the people who are going to cause it to move higher. And if we're all looking at the chart and saying, well, actually, this has happened before and good things have followed suit, then we become somewhat of a self-fulfilling prophecy in, ha in getting the shares higher. Okay, So that's how that works. But if you notice, the next day's low after that move was 44, and then the, day pro the following day was 43. So it, it never really went below the immediate lows following that big down day. <clears throat> Therefore, what I want to see moving forward is I'm going to use today's low as, as really my key support area. So 75.2 was the low, 75 cents just about. So let's, let's go ahead and say that key support is in that 70 to 75 cent range, right around this low. Because we're going to allow for the stock to maybe move a little bit lower than 75, but we don't want to go much below 75 at all. Otherwise, that'll signal that we might head back towards this low here. So that takes care of support, okay, right around 75 cents, you know, 72, 73, 74, give or take those levels, okay. And that's, that's for more of a intermediate term trend when I'm talking about those levels. Now, as for the immediate term, we're at 83 cents. Okay, you can see this high here was at 77 cents, closed at 76.5. The low from this day was 78 cents and it opened at 78.5. So we're going to take this high and this. you know, kind of the open from today of 80 cents, 81 and a half, combined with the high from back here at 77 cents. And also you had the open from here at 78, 78 and a half cents. There's a lot of congestion, what I refer to as price congestion. So in the immediate term, we're going to say that support is between 77 and 81 cents the previous highs, and then today's open, okay? Now, as for resistance, today's high of 85 cents is the first resistance level to take out, okay? 
So it closed right around 84. So today's high of 85, we're very close to it as the first is the first high. Let's move to a 15 minute chart. The reason we're doing this is to see where a lot of the volume traded. Okay, now you have this high here as well at 91 cents. Now you can actually see where the where the 85 cent high came into play. If you look back to Friday, 85 cents was a high on Friday as well. So 85 cent resistance is significant. Above 85, you're going to talk about your next your next most recent high, which is right here at 91 cents. Okay? And then you just repeat the process. Above 91 cents, you want to talk about your next most recent high, which is then at 94.55. Okay? Above that, then we can talk about retesting these highs here at a dollar and four cents. So just call it a dollar to a dollar five. So resistance levels. 85, 91, 94.5, and then a buck. Support levels, we already talked about. Key support, 77 to 81 on a very short term basis. And then from a more intermediate perspective, you know, five to 10 days in order to replicate the bounce that was made after this big down move, we're talking about just right around that 75 cent range. If you think about these two lows of 44 and then 43, okay? So maybe we'll see 75 and 74, 75 and 73, just hypothetically speaking. So that's what we want to watch for in S&P 10. Okay, let's do SEFE. -E. Now, this stock is, these are all promoted stocks, by the way. These stocks are all being promoted, so that's definitely something to be aware of. But in penny stocks, penny stocks, don't really move unless they're being promoted. So what I like about SCFE right away is look at this beautiful trend. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven days in a row that SEFE hasn't gone below the prior day's low. So that's the first thing we're going to look for. It's also seven days in a row we've gone above the prior day's high. So we're putting in higher highs and higher lows. That is the textbook definition of an uptrend. So that's beautiful. So your first clue that the trend might be exhausting itself is going to be if one of those two things don't happen, i.e. we don't get above today's high of 106 tomorrow or we go below today's low of 98 cents tomorrow. Okay, The, the one with worse implications would, would obviously be going below the prior day's low. Okay, so we Support, key support is 98 cents. We certainly don't want to go below 98 cents. Why not? Because we haven't done it in seven days. So we don't want to find out what's going to happen if we do. Simple as that. Okay? And if we don't go above 106, that's not terrible because the stock has made a nice move from 80 up to, you know, $1.06. So we're talking about a nice, you know, 25% move. So some consolidation might be natural, okay? But the best case scenario is going to be we put in a high tomorrow above 106 and we put in a low above 98. The other thing I like about SEFE is volume is getting higher as the price is increasing. Why is that important? Because as the price is increasing, i.e. it's getting more expensive, demand isn't leveling off. Usually, what you'll see, just if you think about yourself shopping at a store for clothes or shopping for a car or anything like that, the more expensive things get, the less inclined you are to buy them. Okay, So what I like about SEFE is the more expensive it's getting, the more volume that's coming in, the more buying that appears to be going on. So that's a great sign that demand is keeping up. And if that continues, then this trend should continue as well. Now, the other reason I like SCFE is because it's a, a dollar stock getting promoted. And something you should always be aware of are other stocks that have moved that have kind of similar setups. So what I mean by that is let's take TFER, for instance. This was a dollar stock that got promoted 
uh, first back here in December, it got promoted from a dollar to 140, and then again here in March, it got promoted from a dollar up to 150. Okay, STVF. This most recently was a stock that got promoted from around 80 cents all the way up to 325. So dollar stock promotions are hot; they're in play. Okay, so people are looking for them; they're fresh on everybody's mind. So a stock like SCFE is likely going to benefit from the fact that there have been two successful dollar stock promotions just recently. Now, I'm not saying SCFE is going to go to $1.40 or $3 like TFER or STVF. I'm simply being aware of what's going on in the market that I'm focused in. You need to be aware of your surroundings. Right now, our surroundings are other dollar stocks that have been promoted like TFER and STVF. So we want to be aware of what those stocks did. To that same token, TFER had a big down move, okay, from 160 all the way back down to a buck. STVF, big down move from 325 down to a buck 50. Giant drops, okay? So again, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen with SEFE. I'm just pointing out what's happened to other dollar stock promotions because that's what we know this is. So as for support and resistance, though, we talked about it. $0.98 cents on the low, $1.06 on the high. We also want to see volume continue to be strong. 3 million shares traded today, so we want to see another 2.5 million shares at least trade tomorrow. Okay? GTRL, uh, an absolute volume explosion today. The promoters definitely had a lot of juice behind this. You can see this is an all-time volume high. And I would consider it an all-time price high as well. Now you'll say, well, what do you mean? Back in 2009, it traded at a dollar. Well, you know what? Look at the volume. 17,000 shares, 500 shares, 12,000 shares, 10,000 shares, 100 shares. So I don't put any weight on the price action that happened here because there was no volume that traded in that range, at least not enough so where it's going to impact the price today. Okay, When there's no volume at prior prices, there's no people in at prior prices, which means there's nobody that's going to be making a decision that could impact the price. So a lack of volume back then tells me I don't need to really concern myself with it now. Okay, So couple things I noticed. We got above our most recent highs very powerfully, right around 10 cents. Okay. Now, what's interesting, this is a true, true uh, lesson in charting here. We always talk about former resistance becoming new support. Now, if you look, GTRL opened today at 12 cents. Okay. These prior highs were at 10, 9, 11 cents, you know, 10 cents. So in that 10 to 11 cent range. So, so again, GTRL gapped up over that range, right? But then it pulled back. And look where it pulled back to. 10.7. Right at this prior level of resistance is where it found new support. You can see this on the intraday chart from today. Here was the gap up at 12. Okay. But then look. Here's the move down. Okay. Down the, back to that 10 cent range. And then look how volume kind of dried up in that range because, again, prior resistance was becoming new support. So people weren't willing to sell at support. And then eventually, you know, somebody got sick of waiting to get in. And, you know, here you go. They bought it. They initiated a good position here. We're looking at a five-minute chart of today's action. And then you can see it. It put in higher lows throughout the day. Okay. You've got this low. Then you've got these lows here. Then you've got these lows here. So on and so forth. So again, higher lows. Okay? That's good. You know, we saw higher lows throughout the day after the initial, you know, rush at the open. That tells me that people were buying dips. They wanted to get in this stock for whatever reason. We don't care why. We just analyze the price action and the volume. And what the price action and the volume tells me is people want it in. They want it in. Okay? And they got in. And you know what? Towards the end of the day, 
if we look now at a 15 minute chart of today's action, this is what I like the most. You had a real volume drop off past 12 o'clock, right? Not a lot of volume traded the last two and a half, three hours of the day. However, the last 15 minutes of the day, that's what we're looking at now, 15 minute chart of today's action, you had the highest volume it had seen all afternoon. That tells me that people wanted in before the close. Furthermore, the price reacted very well. The price rose, okay? The price rose in this 15 minute period on the lowest volume that it took to rise on all day. That tells me that maybe the, the promoters behind it stopped diluting, okay? Maybe a big seller was out, which is essentially the same thing. At any rate, demand as represented by this volume bar was not that great. It was definitely above average relative to the afternoon for today, but it wasn't that great. Yet the price was still able to react incredibly well, which is a great sign because that means theoretically tomorrow, if demand is even better within the first 15 minutes of the day tomorrow than it was in the last 15 minutes of the day today, the price should react that much better. Okay, so therefore, within the first 15 minutes of the day tomorrow, I would like to see greater volume than, you know, these candles here, these three candles. So let's say 1.6 to 2.4 million shares. If we get that and the price is rising, then that will signal to me there could be some continuation to this move. And if we break today's high of day at 14 cents, and then the next psychological level would be 15, then we could realistically target a move to 20 cents, okay? So if we can break above the 15 cent level, 20 cents would be the target. If the volume criteria I, ju criteria I just talked about, 1.6 to 2.4 million shares shows up for us and gives us that pattern, okay? Otherwise, if the volume isn't there, one of two things may happen. We may consolidate and go sideways, okay? Or it may downtrend and, and, and break this low. So we've got two key supports to watch. Today's open of 12 cents. It's going to be our first support. And then today's low of 10.7. Below 10.7, you have psychological support at 10 cents. But the reason I don't want to see it go below today's low is because anybody who bought in today bought in at 10.7 or higher, duh, as evidenced by the fact that that's the low of the day. So therefore, if we go below today's low of the day, now anybody who bought in today opens their portfolio, and instead of seeing the color green, now they see the color red, okay? Everybody likes holding a stock when it's in the green. They have no problem. They think it's going higher. But as soon as it goes red on them, now they say, uh-oh, what's wrong? And now they start worrying. So that's why the lows of the day are so important. And it's also, like I pointed out with SEFE, we haven't gone below the prior day's low. So we don't want to stick around and see what's going to happen if we do go below that prior day's low. So 12 cents support, which is today's open. Then 10.7, which is today's low. Resistance, that 14 to 15 cent range, and then psychologically at 20 cents. After 20 cents, next psychological level would be 25. Okay, last one, HBRM. Now, HBRM has this fat finger here. It didn't really trade that high. So I'm going to shorten the chart to a 26-day chart. And you can see that this is just a beautiful breakout. Huge volume, 200 million shares traded so you know well over a million dollars traded today and I want to use a five minute chart of today's action now here's what I see and this is a good teaching point in terms of volume and what it means so if you look at 1335 which is 135 HBRM made its high of the day 0134 13 million shares traded between 0125 and 0134, okay? That means you had over $170,000 trade in that range, and the stock wasn't able to move. You can see from looking at this chart, that's the most volume that traded in, that, in, in a five-minute 
time period all day. It's also one of the tightest ranges, meaning that if you look at the five minutes prior, it traded 7 million shares and the price was able to go from a penny 108 up to 125. Okay, so is it, the price was able to react well. This time, though, the price didn't react well, it didn't really go anywhere. Now, when you have all of this volume trade in such a tight range, what that means now is we need even more volume to come in to be able to advance past this range because essentially we've left a lot of people holding shares now in that very tightly defined price, average price, right? 0125 to 0134. That's a very narrow range that a lot of volume traded in. So now as soon as we go down, anybody who bought shares here, which judging by the five minute volume, there was a lot of them, now they're down, they're in the red. So you're gonna have a couple things. You're gonna have the people who are, when the price goes lower, they're gonna say, okay, whatever, I'll hold on to my shares, I'm not worried, okay? Then you're gonna have the people who are gonna say, I'm buying more. Then you're gonna have the people who say, you know what, I'm getting out, I'm taking a loss. Then you have the people that say, I'm not gonna take a loss, but instead of selling at two cents like I was hoping to, I'm going to sell at one and a half cents because I'm not really comfortable with the fact that it you know, made such a big down move after I got in. I mean, think about it. If you bought shares at 0.13, it went down to a penny within 25, 30 minutes. So you were right away down 20%. So put yourself in that person's shoes and you could imagine that if they're, a, if they're an emotional trader and inexperienced, which most people playing penny stocks are, they're likely a little jittery, okay? And, you know, they've been swayed now, and the original decision they were going to go with has now changed, right? So all of those scenarios that I just laid out have implications for the price. And the usual implication is negative. The reason is, is because if you have the people who say they're going to average down and say they buy at, you know, a penny or so on this down move, now they've just lowered their average from 1.3 one three, one three down to 1.2. So now they can sell lower than they were originally intending to because now to make 20% from 1.2 from is easier or excuse me, it's at a lower price than they needed to make 20% from 1.3, okay? So, so our next resistance level where those people were gonna sell has just gotten taken down a notch, okay? So that's one. Number two, you have the people who just sold for a loss down here, okay? So now these people sold for a loss and let in new buyers at a lower price. So people who were maybe thinking about buying at 1.3 but waited to buy at 1.1 now, at 1.3, they can sell for a profit. Now they're up 15%, okay? So again, we're bringing the resistance level down, okay? Now you have the third scenario of the people who are going to sell, you know, at break even, or they're going to lower their target because they were just down 20% and they're just excited to get out at this point. Again, they're lowering the resistance level down a notch, okay? That's as opposed to these high volume spikes here at 940 and 1030, where the price never really dipped below those entries, right? So the, psych the psychological impact on the price was much different. We didn't have to discuss the things we just discussed now back here because the price never the price never retreated below these people's entries okay so they didn't have to think about the scenarios I just outlined so that's that's the psychology behind high volume in a tight price range when the price goes down those are the types of things you need to understand and analyze in order to be successful okay so that brings us to the point of resistance now you can see this range is where all the volume traded, right? And this range was the high of the day for the latter part of the afternoon. No coincidence, no coincidence at all. So our, our key resistance level is gonna be, let's call it 0.135 to 0.15.
okay? If we can break 015, then we're going to target the 018 to 2 cent level, okay? As for support, this afternoon low and then this low right here is very important. Now the thing I notice about this low, if I just put the line here, is this low coincides with this range, okay? The bottom of that range, right? So you can see we've got a pretty clearly defined range right here for about a half an hour between two and three o'clock. And then once we got back above it and started testing resistance, you can see then the next dip towards that range got bought. So there is good support here. I mean, the stock was up 133%. Don't get me wrong, it, it made a great move. Just earlier I was trying to explain how you interpret a high volume narrow range like this, okay? So our key support is gonna be a penny to one two. So 01 to 012, key support, and then key resistance 013 to 015. And just as we've said with all the others, we want to see volume keep up. So we traded 220 million shares today. We don't necessarily need to see that much because that's, that's a ton. But we do want to see, you know, greater than this amount here. So, you know, over 150 million shares is what we want to see tomorrow. So again, that was coverage on HBRM, SNPK, GTRL, and SEFE.